Hello Summoners, this is the odd one from Solomid.net, and for the TSM fundraiser, I've been asked to do a jungle guide. Rather than show off another champion, I figure this one may be more helpful by being a general jungle guide to know the basics of good jungling, and hope that you can apply whatever you learn here on whatever champion you want to jungle with. So to begin, let's dive right into early game routes. The standard route. This consists of sweeping from ancient golems all the way to double golems for a quick level 4 by around 3 minutes 40 seconds to 4 minutes. The standard route I've found has given me the most flexibility between ganking and leveling and as such this is the one I'll focus on. Take note that we have a perfect level 3 upon killing the wraith camp. This will be very important later in the video when we have ganks that occur around the 3 minute mark. And upon killing lizard and double golems we'll have a champion that has a double buff and level 4. Often claw farmer and 5 potions are required for this route if you receive no help whatsoever. But by exploiting the fact that we can get help at blue and even wolves, I'll show you how to, we can further optimize this route. For example, we all know the unoptimized route of starting blue first with a leash. However, often there are ways to make it faster depending on your champion. For instance, rather than simply doing nothing in the spawn time for blue buff, we can take out a wolf for free before it spawns, because I know I won't take as much damage killing the ancient golem because I'll have a leash. So here we have Brand on this side and Jenna down here. And they're going to do some damage to it and leash it, so not only do I take less damage, they've done more damage to the camp. This also allows for different item builds or skill builds, such as in the case with Cloth Armor and Amumu. I can easily switch it to a regrowth pendant when I have a good leash and come out ahead by building an early Philosopher's Stone. So, with that in mind, would it be possible to further refine this route and turn out some plays with it? Turns out, we can. Using allied champions, I can further optimize the experience gains that I see by attempting to wipe out the wolves before even blue spawns. So thanks to Tristano's AoE damage, I'm able to wipe out this camp before Ancient Golem, which spawns at 155. So once this camp is done, I'll show you what we can gain from having that extra time. So note the enemy jungler, which is Trundle, he hasn't done this, so we're going to have a nice time advantage, which I can use to instead take his wraiths. There we go. So he's still on his walls while I'm right beside his wraith camp. So by the time he crosses the lane and sees me, I'll be done the wraith camp, which means I'll have a nice experience advantage over him, and I can still do my own camp on the other side while his is not spawned for another 100 seconds. But if you figure that it's too risky to counter jungle, you can make use of your faster time by ganking at a time where people won't expect it. Here I'm about to be level 3 by 2 minutes and 40 seconds. And then I can gank with the intent to either blow the enemy summoners or get a kill. So here we go. I let Karfus bait Turek. Oh even now here even Remus comes to comes to counter gank, but it doesn't get either of us. So even though the gank was almost failure. Like we actually get the kill here. I've blown middle summoners so I can gank them at a later time. So here I do something a little different. Instead of ganking middle, I've been told that top has no flash because Cassiopeia already used it. So she's not gonna expect a gank at around three minute, three minutes because most people haven't warded this or think that a level for you dear is going to come, because she's only level 2, Timo's only level 2, so she's standing there oblivious to the fact I'm right there, and this is an easy kill, because Timo has forced her flash already. Regardless, if no ganks are able to be seen at that current time, you can adapt and just continue with a route that gives level 4 in about 4 minutes. Here I choose the power level to level 4 rather than put a point into fear and attempt the gank. It's 2.50 and it's about to be done, and I don't say gank middle, so... I continue on the Liz by leveling uh, Drain again to make it faster. But it's important to note that level 3 gained at 3 minutes is extremely useful for early gank as most champions will be able to put a point into all 3 skills they need 
for a gank even if they don't have red buff. Having a flexible route allows you to adapt in case of, say, a level 1 teamfight where you can simply ki skip the killing wolves early step to change it to do the standard way to get back in the game. For instance, instead of killing wolves first, you could just start with ancient golems. So here, Fiddle will be level 4 at 340, I believe. And that's a fairly nice time. Gankin. Now let's step back and see how this works. A jungler has to balance ganking and leveling, as often ganks will yield far less experience and go to the jungler than simply keeping auto camps constantly dead. It is always important to mix these up. The moment you're seen on the map ganking, it removes all pressure from the other areas of the map as they'll know your exact spot at that moment. So the reason I'm showing this clip is where we get that done. So this knowledge of where the jungler is also ties in the counter jungling as well as ganking. So here I figure that since the enemy Trindamir has yet to pass that ward to go to his raves, uh, I assume that he's in my jungle, so I killed a big wolf. So here I'm going to check the raves. The raves will be gone, his wolves are gone, his raves are gone. Now the fact that he still hasn't passed that ward, our entire team knows he's at our double golems. So now since we know his basic location, all pressure is gone from the jungle jungler because we know his exact spot and we can counter him effectively. So here, following up that gank earlier on Cassiopeia, I decided to clear the double golem camp and lizard camp to make sure I get a constant flow of experience and gold. So good enemy laners tend to go aggressive at the first sign they realize or think there won't be any external ganks because the jungler is busy farming or ganking someone else. One of the times they tend to do this is after a gank, as they never expect to be ganked a second time in this in a couple minutes. So here I'm going to go back, and then I'm instantly going to go to the top lane and the gank again. By taking advantage, advantage of this fact, you can become extremely annoying and let the enemy start the blame game ahead of yours. So here I sneak into this brush. Okay, uh, that's a replay glitch, but there you go. And we just let Timo bait it out. So I'm not I'm not gonna go in until this cr or this minion dies because I know she's trying to last hit it. She's gonna try to last hit this one, and this is when I go in. Since she has no flash, since it's only been two minutes or so, she dies right there. So here we do it again on middle. Often mid ganks are merely to blow summoners since it's difficult to get any kills if they do have summoners, but since last gank was within 2 minutes, uh, free 15 or so, we know Tarek doesn't have the summoners back so he mistakenly stays a bit too long after pushing. And yeah, Udyr is known to be a curse to all laners. Coming back to ganking, a gank will usually fail if the enemy sees it with enough time to prevent it, which makes it important to not be seen until it's far too late. To understand this, we have to look at every lane and notice the exactly out of the terrain. So here at the top lane, if I'm on purple side, it is significantly harder for me to provide gank support if the lane minions are close to the river, as the back entrance towards blue is covered by a turret. However, note that if we're on blue side and we have an extra path from behind which isn't covered by Purblest turret, with this knowledge combined with lane brush ganks, which I'll cover later, we see that there are three basic ways to gank top on blue team while having the same on purple, but the bird is only useful if the lane is pushed to tower. The bot lane is similar except it goes the other way with the purple team having the advantage of the easier route. So with this in mind, we understand if I were laying in on the disadvantageous side, at either top or bottom, I'd need at least two words to cover ganks from Riverside. As in this clip, uh, my team has told me there's a word right there, so... Oh, okay, I see what happens. Alright, so I go get red, and we know there's a word here. However, this word will only cover this area. So if I were to hug the wall and go by this brush, they wouldn't see me coming. So, for purple side, it's disadvantageous to be here because you need two worlds to truly cover the river. One way around this is, which I'll explain later in the warden part of this guide, is to have a ward either here or here to make sure they can't use the river so you can put one ward here. 
So here I come in unnoticed because they think they're safe because there's a ward right there, but I completely walked by it. So I call for the gank and we pick up Tarek, who's unable to escape. Here we go. And he is killed with little trouble.